Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to discuss UV unwrapping. Now, I know I've made quite a few videos on this, and if you haven't seen my last video showing our four main unwrapping tricks, I would highly recommend watching that because that's going to really help you with your hard surface unwrapping. So I'm just going to use a pretty simple shape here just to kind of demonstrate the workflow I use. Um, I feel like people overcomplicate the whole unwrapping process and um, I also see a lot of people use the Smart UV Project feature, which is good if you're testing things, but if you're doing this in a more professional, like clean environment where you want everything to look good, I would not recommend using Smart UV Project. I used to think it was the best thing ever, and then I realized the results were not as good as if you just did it manually. It takes more time to do it manually, but it's worth it. And before we start the tutorial, I'd like to shout out our brand new Hard Surface Game Asset 2.0 course. This course goes over a lot of stuff, including more complex unwrapping examples, and also showcases our custom Mad T workflow for Hard Surface Game Assets. So if you want to learn how to make game assets, how to unwrap, how to do the entire process start to finish, check out our course. It's still on sale, still plenty of perks to grab, so I'll put a link to that in the top of the description. So what I'm going to do is just add a new material here, and I'm just going to call it UVs. You can name it whatever you want. And then let me just come in here and drop on an, um, an image texture. So we'll drop that in. You could just make it like 4K, name it whatever you want, and you can just go and you can turn this off or on depending on if you're using the alpha channel. But I'm going to change that to UV grid and then connect it up. And this is just going to give you like the base setup that you need for your UVs. So, you know, one step at a time. Now I'd also recommend going to the workspace panel and turning on under options, make sure you're in edit mode, uh, the live unwrap feature. So that way whenever you add a seam somewhere, it's going to automatically update based on where you place those seams. Now what I always do just right off the bat is let Blender do most of the work. So I work backwards. If you've seen my UV videos before, you know this. I always like to go in and select the sharp edges and then just mark the seam. And this is going to give you like a good base layout. It's not going to be perfect. You can see we have quite a few warps and random things in here, but it's a good base. It works. So what we're going to do is just unwrap this. So U to unwrap and then change this to conformal. Because for hard surface objects, you almost always want a conformal method. It's going to be better um, than angle based. Unless you're using organics, of course, then you could use angle based. But you just kind of need to play with it. Anyways, um, at this point, you're going to see we have quite a few problems, and on trickier pieces like this, this is where people kind of give up or just get confused, and all it takes is just a little bit of thinking to figure out where exactly you should drop these seams. Now in this case, to clean up some of this mess here, you're going to have an obvious seam somewhere. You can't really avoid it. So in this case, it's kind of a matter of like, where do you want to put that seam, and I'm thinking Maybe just like right around here would be a good spot. So I'm just going to alt click and control E to mark the seam and just drop it there. And we could always, you know, change it somewhere else if we wanted to, but this is good for now. So now what we're going to do is we're also going to remove seams that we don't need. And for example, like the way I picture it is, you know, this whole area that we're facing is like kind of flat. Imagine this area is projected over. Honestly, I could go in here and remove these seams as well because to watch how these seams will continue through nicely when I clear it with control E, notice it continues and flows nicely through there. This seam isn't really contributing anything because there's no need to have it there. The, the UVs can just kind of flow through nicely, right? So we're going to do the same thing over here. We're just going to clear this one out, clear seam, and then, yeah, that looks good. So already we're just removing a few seams and we already have a much better result. Now this piece is symmetrical, so I'm not going to even work on the other side because we can always symmetrize it um, once we're done. So the next thing I like to look for is what seams are kind of continuing through the object nicely. Now we always need holding seams around the edges, which we already have. And you can tell because if I go into face mode and press the L key, notice how these islands are separate. They're kind of isolated by these seams here. Now if I removed one of these seams here, for example, and then I press the L key and notice it's going to select through the entire thing. And that's going to kind of be an indicator if you ever have any problems. Just press the L key in face mode and see which areas are being selected because they, they shouldn't select through like this. You should just have all of these seams separating different portions of your objects. 
Anyways, at this point, what I like to do is check for any chamfers, and you're going to see we have quite a few here. Chamfers are not going to need two seams back to back, so you can always, almost always remove one of them. So I'm just going to go through here, and I'm just going to remove the back one. It's going to be the easiest. And now what we're left with, if you've seen my other videos, is something we call a ring. If I press the L key in face mode, and we go into the UV editor, Notice how we kind of have like this ring formation. If I close these checkers out, you're going to kind of see it's like a ring almost. And we need to flatten this. And the way you would flatten that is you would basically cut it and then flatten it. And the way we cut it in the scent of UV is we put a seam. And the way I like to do this is just to kind of put this seam in an area you're not going to really notice it. And this is where you have to kind of consider like what exactly is this going to be used for. If it's like a game asset, Try to think to yourself, like, if this is, you know, a handle and a character is holding it, like, you're most likely not going to see the seam if it's placed on the top compared to the bottom. So kind of think about it like that. So it doesn't really matter where you put the seam. I would just put it in a spot where it's going to make the most sense, depending on the context. And now you're going to have a much cleaner result, which you can easily straighten out um, if you wanted to do that. But that's probably fine, honestly. So that looks good. And... We don't have any more chamfers, I don't think, which is good. Now what we can do is we can kind of remove these right here as well, because for apparently no reason, we kind of have these, you know, separated islands. Notice, you know, we have a separate island here and here and here, and this is just going to cause discontinuities in the checkers and the textures, as you can see. So there's no need to really have all these. Just go ahead and clear out these seams, and what's going to happen is it's now going to be one straight line all connected together with no discontinuities. I could even try to clear this seam out here as well and see if that messes with anything. I think it's actually all right, which is good. Clear this one out as well. Now I don't want to clear this one out over here because this area is actually holding together this part compared to this part. If I clear this one out, um, we're going to end up losing that, just going to kind of cause a mess. So we're going to leave that one alone. Yeah, it looks good. And same idea here, we have yet another ring. If I just select through here, you're going to see that. Another ring, so we're just going to flatten that out. And once again, in this case, it would make the most sense to just put it on the top. And now you're going to see we have a much cleaner um, set. It's not like warped or anything. It's nice and straight. And the reason it's nice and straight is because this is getting projected in a straight line onto that checker texture. If I pull that back up, Notice it's not like, you know, warping around. It's just going straight through the checker and then getting projected onto the mesh. So I really want you guys to kind of picture this intuitively because a lot of people do unwrapping, but you're not going to have much success with unwrapping if you can't visualize why the checkers are projecting in the way they are. You really want to be able to visualize that and everything's going to become very, very natural to you. So we're going to go through here and also maybe clear these out have a nice continuation and you're going to see in this case it actually didn't work out too well it um, kind of caused some warps here and it's kind of a mess so what I'm going to do instead is just drop another seam back in here to kind of hold it just somewhere we can't see it and then we'll be good to go same for over here we'll put another seam to avoid that ring same for this one and same for this one here. So the you know the more cylindrical objects are very easy to do. You just have to put a single seam somewhere. Same for this one. And then same for this one up here. And already you're going to see we have a very, very clean result. And I don't think there's too much left to do on this one, honestly. Now what I could do is I could go into face mode and press the L key, and you're going to see we have a really long ring on this one. This specific ring is going all the way around. So once again, same idea, just put a seam somewhere where it's not going to be obvious. And once again, if this is like, you know, a handheld thing, um, maybe in this case, since it's handheld, you'll actually see the top of this part compared to this part. So maybe in this case, we could put the seam here on the bottom somewhere where it's kind of hidden. And then if we just press the L key, you're going to see we have a nice, much nicer, cleaner transition. This would look better if it was straightened out, um, but it's not that big of a deal in this case. If you want to use the UV squares out on to straighten these out, you'll probably need to convert these into quads. Otherwise, it won't work very well. Um, but we can just give it a try and see. Yeah, it's just going to kind of mess up. So if you wanted to straighten this out using an add-on, you could always go in here and just try to retopologize it a bit. But... 
Honestly, if the checkers are the same, I'm not too worried about it, especially if it was like a more grungy texture, it wouldn't matter too much because it's kind of random. So uh, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. It just really depends on your overall workflow. And I also notice we missed these right here so we can clear these out. And then we can clear these out too. And it looks like we're gonna have to actually keep one of those so we can put it there instead. There we go, it looks a lot better. Now obviously we're gonna have a very clear seam going around here. So if you didn't like that, you could always, you know, try to reposition it. So I could go in here Instead of having it on the side, I could maybe put it like on the top. But this specific situation is kind of unavoidable. There's not too much you can do about it. You could put the seam there and kind of get a better result. It's really all up to you. I actually think this looks a little bit better, so it's not too bad. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, just symmetrize this. You could use, actually this is not centered, so I'm just going to go ahead and selection to cursor. And then you could just go into edit mode and you could use Mesh Machine or Hard Ops if you wanted to, or simply symmetrize this from the positive X to the negative X. So we'll just go in here, positive X to negative X, and it's not working, so maybe the rotation needs applied. Yes, it does, because we have 90 degrees. So if I control A, apply the rotation, interesting. I think we have a mirror modifier as well. See, the more you use Blender, the more you kind of know which areas to look for. A lot of people would run into these situations and get confused, but really you just have to look for what would be the culprit here. In this case, whenever I try to, you know, apply the rotation and something goes wrong here, that kind of tells me it's a modifier. So I'm just going to go in here and apply that mirror. And now if I apply the rotation, everything should be good. And then we can finally use our nice symmetrize tool here. And it's just going to go from this side and symmetrize over to this side. So we basically got rid of half the work. Now, if this were going to be a game asset, I would do quite a few additional things here. I would optimize it, decimate things down. Um, I'd remove these holes that we could bake. I'd change the bevel segments. I'd do a lot of things. And you can grab our new game asset course if you want to learn about that. But um, if, I'm not going to really be using this for a game asset, just a demonstration. So at this point is where I could really go in and pack it and make sure everything's clean. Now I want to show you, oh, by the way, if you're using a bevel, always set this to one because if you try to bake this with a three segment bevel, it won't work well. Anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the UV editor and just um, let's just unwrap it one more time, make sure everything's good and make sure that's set to conformal and get rid of that checker. So you're going to see we have quite a bit of wasted space here. And even if I try to use UV Pack Master, if I click Pack, you're going to see it doesn't really do too much. Reason being is because this super long island here on the top is basically preventing any more efficient packing results. Ideally, we want to split this into a few islands. The analogy I give is imagine you have like a long wooden pole and you try to fit it into a backpack probably not going to fit in there very well, but if you broke the pole in like a half or thirds or fourths, you could pack that a lot more efficiently. And that's kind of what you can imagine this thing as, like a long wooden pole. Let's try to split it up. So what I'm going to do is go and turn on the sync island selection and just press the L key and make sure you're in face mode. Press the L key and just kind of figure out what exactly is, is this corresponding to here. And you're going to see it actually ends up being this entire thing here on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just kind of split this up. I could go over here and maybe put another seam, right? I can maybe, depends how far you want to go with it, of course, and how much um, you really want to get a decent pack. But that's how you could basically split these up. I could even put one here. And then same idea for this portion. I'm just going to actually symmetrize this again. So mesh, symmetrize. And now if I unwrap this again, look at how much more space we have, just splitting those up. So yes, you'll have more obvious seams, but you'll also have a much better pack. And depending on the situation, this may or may not be the route you want to take, but in this case, I'm just going to do that. And I also noticed here, I could probably clear those out too. I didn't do too much work on the back, but there wasn't really a need. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and unwrap this one more time and you're going to see pretty decent result. We could also go into UV Pack Master and, you know, just pack it a few times. I like to use the heuristic and turn the wait time to 10 seconds. Just kind of let it go through 
and iterate as best as it can. And if you want a better pack, you're just going to have to keep splitting up the islands until you get the pack that you want. Now we're actually working with a client on a on a project for a video game, and um, in this case, I wasn't actually concerned. I had a ton of different objects we were working on with a lot of gray space, but the reason that gray space didn't concern me is because I wanted all the objects we were making to have the same texel density. So on some of the items with really good texel density, I was gonna have to drop those down anyway. So I wasn't super concerned about the gray space in those types of cases, but that's kind of a different, more advanced subject. If you guys want a video on texel density and how to kind of manage all that stuff, I'd be happy to make one. But that does get into way more advanced techniques, um, which is kind of boring. But if you want to see a video on that, let me know. I'd be happy to make one. But yeah, I mean, if you want to split this up and get better packs, you just have to keep kind of reducing the islands down as best you can. And you're going to see, if we go to Smart UV Project, we're going to get kind of a similar result anyways. But it's going to be a lot worse, and there's going to be a lot more seams compared to if we just did the manual work like we did here, and then Blender crashed. Make sure you get power save, guys, because if you get a crash, you can always recover the auto save, which at worst case, you're losing like a minute or two, so it's a good add-on. But this is the general idea behind these more complex unwraps, and I wouldn't even call them complex, honestly. I would just call them a bit tricky if you don't know what you're looking for, but... This is the general workflow, this is how I do it, and this is how you should be applying your unwraps to all your objects as well. And if you guys haven't picked up our new Game Asset 2.0 course, we go into a lot more in-depth steps and show you the exact unwrapping process we use, as well as the overall Game Asset workflow. I think that'll give you a bit more of an idea if you're trying to focus your unwraps more on Game Assets, because that's not really what I focused on in this video. but. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description to that course. It's brand new. A lot of people are enjoying it. But this is the general workflow. You can use it on all your hard surface assets, even if it looks like a tricky asset. It's not that bad. Anyways, thanks a bunch for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.